Good afternoon. My name is John Paul Mejia. I'm an 18 year old student who's lucky to call Miami home. I want to welcome you today to our youth run press conference. You are about to witness courageous young leaders from our great state of Florida defend the people and places they love by speaking out against Senate Bill 1128 and House Bill 919. If passed, these two bills will not only put the health and futures of our communities on the line, but will erode the foundations of our democracy itself. Whether it be by crushing the transition from dangerous and polluting energy to job creating clean energy, or simply barring our communities from determining what's best for them, these bills are not written in the best interest of the public and certainly not in the best interest of our youth. Needless to say, I present to you our first speaker, Christopher. Hello, my name is Christopher Lyons from Florida Space Coast, and I am a middle school student in the sixth grade. State lawmakers are pushing for energy legis legislation that can negatively impact many Floridians like me for generations to come. So I'm asking our elected officials to oppose it. Senate Bill 1128 and House Bill 919 will take away the voices of communities across Florida when it comes to energy decisions that impact our local areas and the futures of young people like me. The most many of Florida's communities have chosen to pursue energy independence, which can overall benefit the communities and provide solutions to many changes faced at so, uh, local levels. Unfortunately, these bills restrict the local leaders' abilities to carry out those decisions. It is our choice to pursue the benefits of energy independence for the benefit of our communities and for the overall benefit of our planet. Local communities know their communities best and they deserve to have a say in the this, in this decisions that impact them the most. I graduate in 2027 and my generation will be particularly impacted by the future of my community. While I may not be old enough to vote now, my voice matters now as my generation will face the consequences of the decisions they made today. Being on Florida's coast, we face a lot, a lot of challenges from sea level rise, saltwater intrusion, and several other coastal issues. So we need choices around renewable and clean energy sources that lead to opportunities and resources to help all communities address their unique issues all across the state of Florida. Maintaining local input over local energy decisions will better serve Florida residents and their communities well into the future. I respectfully ask that the Florida Legislative Project, my future and my local community's choice by rejecting Senate Bill 1128 and House Bill 919. We have an opportunity right now to make an impactful decision for the greater good of our communities, for the greater good of our state, and for the greater good of our planet. Hi, my name is Kayla Tedder. I am a student at the University of South Florida in Tampa, majoring in environmental science. I'm originally from Polk County, and now I'm from Tampa, two very different geographies impacted differently by climate change. I've been an organizer in my communities for a while now, and I, I care deeply about our local issues. It's why in 2018, I ran for the local school board. I know firsthand local governments don't have all of the answers, but local city council and city commission meetings are where residents can make their voices heard on issues that impact them. I remember growing up when my dad had an issue with the county related to his business, the county administrative building was less than 10 minutes from my house. From solar farms to natural gas lines, these small but important local meetings are where work gets done and people share input that helps shape policies for our future. These local elections are most directly controlled by our, our local communities. It's where our local elected officials are held most accountable. It's where things get done for the people versus in Tallahassee, which meets one time a year for three months, three months, and it's a six hour drive from Polk County. With Senate Bill 1128 and House Bill 919's broad language, it's hard to tell how far reaching these bills implications could be. 
and if citizens will have any recourse when those bills impact them. Why would state officials want to pass legislation that creates more questions than answers? I'm asking our state legislators, please vote no on these bills. Hello everyone. My name is Nicole Gazzo. I'm from Miami, Florida, and I'm currently a student at the University of Miami. As you all may know, our very own Florida lawmakers are attempting to pass certain bills that could keep my very home from taking the necessary steps it needs in order to make sure I can raise a family of my own here one day. Senate Bill 1128 and House Bill 919 could accentuate the very effects causing the million dollar investments the city of Miami has to think about take, taking daily due to worsening sea level rise and flooding. These bills specifically seek to keep the energy decisions at the state rather than the local level, regardless of popular pursuit to achieve energy independence amongst many high risk Florida communities. Miami is ground zero for sea level rise. How can Miami move forward with all of its carbon neutrality plans that keep my generation filled with hope for a better future if the lawmakers are making these decisions and don't have bold energy mitigation plans? How does it make sense for our very own lawmakers to make it harder for Miami to truly become resilient against the already present global climate crisis? We continue to hit record high temperatures year after year, month after month. Cars have to drive in flooding water in the middle of Bricker, Brickle because our, poor, because our poor flood pumps can't dr take the drastically extra amounts of rain and encroaching sea level rise. The effects are here, yet the policies aren't. So I'm here today to urge you state officials to reject these bills. Instead, work with us. My peers and I will devote as much time as we need in order to make sure you all have the resources and tools you need to paint out a brighter future for us. Please just listen to us and put people above profit for once. We all want what's best for our state. Together, through giving clean and green energy a try, we could achieve economic returns that we didn't even know were possible. We live in the sunshine state after all. Let's give those solar rays a try. Thank you. Now we will be introducing Jay from Pensacola, who is giving us a message. Layla McGee and I are from Pensacola, Florida. And I'm a student here at the University. Hello, my name is Jayla McGee and I'm from Pensacola, Florida. And I'm a student here at the University of West Florida in Pensacola, majoring in marine biology and environmental sciences. And I'm also the 100% Renewable Campus Campaign Lead here at the University of West Florida, uh, sponsored by Environment Florida. And many state lawmakers are pushing for short-sighted short energy preemption legislation that can negatively impact uh, many Floridians like myself. And so I'm asking our elected officials to oppose it. And so just a little bit of background information, Senate Bill 1128 and House Bill 919 would take away the voices of communities across Florida when it comes to energy decisions that impact local areas and the futures of young people like myself the most. Uh, many Floridians have, uh, or Florida communities, uh, I should say, have chosen to pursue energy independence. And these bills will hinder local leaders' ability to carry out those decisions. Uh, it is our choice to pursue those benefits of energy independence, and that should be praised, not prevented. So if a community wanted to commit to 100% renewable energy, um, that will basically be eliminated with these uh, two bills. And so I'm asking Florida legislator to please protect my uh, community's future and my local community's choice by rejecting State Bill 1128 and House Bill 919, maintaining local input over local energy decisions will better serve Florida residents and their communities well into the future. Thank you. Hello, my name is Charlotte Stewart Tilly. I'm a homeschooler in 10th grade living in Tallahassee, Florida. 
I became involved in climate activism when I realized how negatively carbon pollution will impact my future if we don't change soon. The city of Tallahassee passed a renewable energy resolution and we have multiple municipal owned utilities instead of large electric corporations supplying our power. If a municipal utility is prohibited from deciding its fuel mix and where it gets its energy from and no other body is empowered to make that decision, then municipal utilities would be unable to operate. SB 1128 and HB 919 prevent the city from making their own independent choices on how we can address our local carbon emissions. The climate crisis is a nonpartisan issue because all of Florida, all of the United States, and all of the world will be gravely affected by it. In Florida, though, it seems we have a lot more to lose. Our beautiful, natural, uniquely Floridian environment is already seeing the effects of a warming, volatile planet. It will only get worse from here, and young Floridians like me are watching and depending on you to make the right decision. I'm asking you, as our Florida representatives, to vote against SB 1128 and HB 919. Please allow our communities to have a say in how our Florida families address carbon pollution. Hi, my name is Gianna Hutton. I'm from Miami and I'm a junior at Miami Palmetto Senior High School. Last year was monumental for students like me with thousands across the world finding their voices and defending their futures and standing up against the climate crisis. Starting in June of 2019, we urged cities across South Florida to recognize the crisis we face. And while eight cities did so declaring climate emergencies, proving that local governments want to take action to curb carbon emissions. Senate Bill 1128 and House Bill 919 evidently do not speak on behalf of local governments and degrades our local leaders' abilities to carry out those promises they made to us. Where I live, not only can we expect two feet of sea level rise by 2050, but we could also expect to live half the year in extreme heat danger days where it's intolerably hot outside. What will that mean for construction workers who work outside, our farmers, the athletes, and even the children who just wanna play? Here in Miami, we are at the front lines of this crisis and we cannot afford for these two bills to take away the voices of communities across Florida when it comes to energy decisions that impact our local areas and my future and the futures of young people like me the most. Instead of passing broad legislation with these consequences, Florida should work towards creative and collaborative solutions um, for the challenges that we face. And I'm asking the Florida legislature to please protect my future and my local community's choice by rejecting SB 1128 and HB 919. Hi, my name is Sarah Masali. I'm from Orlando and I'm a 2020 graduate from Windermere High School and a gap year student. I grew up in a single parent household, so my mom was always working away to support my brother and I. She taught us to be independent, to self-advocate. If you see something wrong, then fix it. So that's exactly what I did, um, not just with my own personal life, but my community. That's what entrenched me in this world of community organizing. And local city council meetings are where residents, old, young, red, or blue, take agency on the issues that affect us, where we turn from citizens to our own self-advocates. In fact, in my short time as a student organizer, I've witnessed this firsthand. Earlier this year, climate activists and Orlando residents joined hand in hand to pressure the Orlando Utilities Commission for a stronger green energy plan that our community needs. This couldn't have happened without the ability of local bodies to create policy catered to the needs their communities demand. And this bill strips that away from us. Two legislators in Tallahassee, we are here because we care about ourselves, our communities, and the issues that affect us. We are here because this is a democratic process we all need to be able to be a part of. We are here because our futures depend on it. Please do not silence us. Be here for us by hearing us. Vote no on SB 1128 and HB 919. 
Hi, my name is Nia Ogletree. I am from Tallahassee and I'm currently a senior at Rickards High School. Many of Florida's communities, including Tallahassee, have chosen to meet the demand of constituents that are asking for more energy options as we prepare to build a resilient future. However, the energy preemption bills SB 1128 and HB 919 significantly hinder our local leaders' ability to carry out those decisions. It is our choice to pursue the benefits of energy independence, and that should be praised, not prevented. Currently, I am working with other youth activists to pass a climate emergency declaration for Tallahassee. Tallahassee has also already passed a clean energy resolution, so passing the energy preemption bills would completely void that resolution that the majority of residents and officials already support. Tallahassee has done so much to start the transition from fossil fuels to clean, renewable energy. This would make their work a waste of time and set back so much of our progress. As a young person, I will be particularly impacted by the future of my local community. I want to have a say in these decisions that will affect me and my peers. Why would state officials want to take that power away from us in our communities? Local city council and county commission meetings are where residents can make their voices heard on issues that affect them. I personally have been able to speak directly to several city commissioners and representatives about local problems that concern me, and I've experienced how important my local representatives really are. SB 1128 and HB 919 would silence our voices and limit the necessary responsibilities of our local government. Please vote against SB 1128 and HB 919. Thank you. Hi, my name is Felicity Hoffman. I currently reside in Naples and I'm a freshman at Community School of Naples. Last year, I actively spoke out with thousands of other students all around Florida, like in Miami and Naples, to urge government officials, such as yourself, to recognize the urgent crisis we are facing in cities all over Florida and the rest of the world. After years of hard work, many communities have finally decided to act on this crisis and pursue energy independence. Senate Bill 1128 and House Bill 919 would restrict the voices of community and young students like me all across Florida when it comes to energy decisions that impact their local areas and the futures of the young generations the most. In addition to the issue of the restrictions of voices, these local communities chose their own independent energy sources. This legislation will preempt the issue of energy regulation to the state where currently no agency or commission has the authority to regulate. Whether you are a Republican or Democrat, we shall all recognize that creating uncertainty is bad for people who call Florida home. Unfortunately, these bills will create unintended consequences that could harm Florida's communities, both now and well into the future. Why would state officials want to pass legislation that creates more questions than answers? As a student worried about her future, I'm asking the Florida legislature to please protect the fate of Florida and my local community choice by rejecting and eliminating Senate Bill 1128 and House Bill 919. Local communities know their communities better than anyone else. They deserve to have a say in the decisions that impact them the most, like maintaining local input over the local energy. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sabrina. I'm from Tallahassee and I'm a student at Rickards High School. I've spent the majority of my high school years helping pass a 100% renewable energy resolution and working on a climate emergency declaration for my city. But many state lawmakers are pushing for preemption bills that would undo all of the hard work we put in. In fact, it would halt every clean energy resolution across Florida. Senate Bill 1128 and House Bill 919 hinders my community's energy independence and makes the energy resolution passed null and void. It's an attack on home rule law speaking points. It takes away our voices when it comes to our local energy decisions. It doesn't matter which party you're from. We need to recognize that these bills will have consequences that will harm our communities. I'm only 17 which means students like me are going to be especially impacted by the future of our community. Please don't take our voices away from us.
I ask that the Florida legislature reject Senate Bill 1128 and House Bill 919. Local input over local energy decisions will better serve our communities now and into the future. Thank you. Thank you, Sabrina, and all the others who spoke. I want to close by sharing an experience that I had when I was 16 years old that explains why I started caring about what happens at the state legislature in Tallahassee and why this bill must be voted against. In the aftermath of Hurricane Irma, a hurricane intensified by the type of dirty energy that bills like these could promote, I witnessed something beautiful in the midst of the rubble. As trees toppled over the houses, there were neighbors there to pick them up and rebuild. As people had no electricity, neighbors let lamps and generators to power the homes of others. As folks ran out of food and went hungry, community leaders were there to feed others. I say this to prove that our communities know what's best for them, contrary to the logic that these bills spew. I say this to ensure that every Floridian, Democrat or Republican has the right to determine what is in the best interest of their communities and their livelihoods. So on that note, let's make one thing clear. The choice ahead for Florida lawmakers is not partisan. Legislators who believe in the power of the communities that they swear to represent will vote against this bill. And those who choose to align themselves with the few companies who desecrate our air, water, health, livelihoods, and democracy itself will vote for it. The right choice in between these two is clear. Senate Bill 1128 and House Bill 919 must be voted down and no future bills resembling them should arise if we truly live in a democracy. On behalf of all those you who you just heard from, thank you for coming. Please share our voices and encourage the right choice to be made.